Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll talk about the CBL makers, which means the different participants and partners in challenge-based learning and their roles and responsibilities. But before talking about roles and responsibilities, it's important to name and identify the different stakeholders who potentially take part in challenge-based learning. The stakeholder mapping that you see in the background gives you a first idea of who might be involved. First of all, you have one or several teachers who initiate, set up, and implement the CBL. Then there are, of course, the students who participate in CBL. They might come from one or several disciplines. Some colleagues from engineering schools, for example, work only with their students, whereas other teachers might want to involve students from different disciplines. The mix that you choose depends, among other factors, on the challenge that you want the students to solve and the competences that you might need in the particular challenge that you want them to work on. Then you will work with partners from the external environment. Very often their part consists in providing the challenge, a real-life challenge that the students will work on. The so-called challenge providers can be private companies, but also public organizations such as municipalities or health care institutions. But challenges can also come from within the university or even be defined by the students themselves. Depending on the topic, teachers might also consider involving other subject matter experts in order to make sure that the teams who work on the challenges have the necessary input from experts if needed. Subject matter experts can be other colleagues from the university or participants from the external world, for example, from the corporate world or public, semi-public or private research institutes. One of the biggest differences between challenge-based learning and more traditional approaches to teaching and learning are the roles of teachers and students. First, let's have a look at the changed roles of teachers. With CBL, they become more than information or subject matter experts. Their new role is to be collaborators in learning how to leverage the power of students, seek new knowledge alongside students, and model positive habits of mind and new ways of thinking and learning. This might sound easy in theory, but it requires a real shift in mindset. The idea to move from the role of the subject matter expert to the one of a collaborator and co-learner can be a difficult one for teachers who are accustomed to guiding the entire experience and being the expert. As a teacher who starts challenge-based learning, you might be tempted to rush the process because you already see the path and the possible outcome, over-engineer the activities because you want to stay in control of what is going to happen in and possibly outside the classroom, Point out solutions to students because the challenge is linked to your field of expertise. However, it's vital to provide space and time to make mistakes, follow false paths and of course correct, accept that situations might once in a while get a little bit messy, admit that several possible solutions might exist and not only one best one, Find the solutions with the students and not for them. Trust that the students will do well. Resist the temptation to take over the process. Your new role in CBL could be described as being the senior learner, with more experience, but not necessarily all the right answers. The main idea is that you are not in the driver's seat. One very important message is that you are responsible for the right environment, but not for the particular learning journey that the student decides to take. In this role, you will help students to identify the learning goals and curriculum standards, create plans with them and help them to manage their time, use your expertise to manage the boundaries of the challenge, make sure that the challenge and the students stay on track. Some authors of journal articles on CBL describe the role of the teachers in CBL as the one of a coach, a co-researcher and co-designer or co-experimenter. Please keep in mind that the changes in roles and responsibilities will probably take some time to get to used to in the beginning for everyone. 
In order to make it a successful experience, all CBL makers need to leave their comfort zone. Now let's have a look at how roles and responsibilities of students change in CBL. The open framework and group work format of challenge-based learning make it important to create structure for the participants. One way to do this is to make sure that the students understand the potential roles they can play in the process. The roles that we will be mentioning in this video are not meant to be prescriptive or definite, as the type of roles needed will depend on the nature of the challenge and the personalities and skills of your students. Students can and probably should have the opportunity to assume multiple roles during the process. Also, more than one student may be assigned to the same role. For example, there may be more than one student doing research work. Students will learn from each other throughout the process, allowing them to gain new skills in areas in which they may not have prior experience. Possible roles are project manager, who manage the overall process, including keeping track of progress towards meeting project deadlines, team productivity, team moral, and so on. Documentarian, who develops the structure and strategy for documenting the entire CBL experience through text, audio, and or video. He or she works closely with the production team to capture key events. Researchers, who manage the development of guiding questions as well as the process and the resources necessary for answering them. He or she collects and organizes content from the researchers. Communicator, who manage the production process for all the media captured during the process. He or she plans how best to capture, edit, organize, and distribute the media assets. The role could also include to keep all the CBL makers informed about the CBL process and to communicate in social or other media. Finalizer, who is responsible for managing the final deliveries, including presentations, print materials, web products, videos, and so on. These and more roles are further described on the following website. You will find this website also in the resources. Since challenge-based learning does not stay limited to the classroom, it can be interesting to have other partners involved. So let's have a look at the roles of the remaining potential participants. Subject matter experts have the role of providing the expert knowledge to the students, for example, in question and answer sessions or interviews, which students could lead with them. Or you might want to involve partners from the corporate world and or the public sector. These partners can play different roles. On the one hand, they could be the ones who provide the challenge. In this role, they can take part as member of the jury, for example, in initial pitches, intermediate or final CBL presentations. Or they can accompany your students during the challenge by playing the roles of mentors, helping the students to get ahead with certain topics or issues by sharing their experience and professional insights. It is also possible that students include their personal or professional network in the challenge at any given time of the challenge that seems appropriate to them. For example, at the very beginning or during the challenge, it might be interesting to identify specific community partners, set up meetings with different stakeholders and get them involved. To sum up, in this video, we discussed the different roles and responsibilities of the different CBL makers. The next step will to have a closer look at the competencies of the different CBL makers. This is what we are going to do in the next video. Hope to see you there.